I'm really glad that Heather is doing this. Yeah, absolutely. And Bill will be here. All right, now you're going to get to hear me prattle on for a minute. I recently went to the um, uh, Native Plant Society and Wildflower Symposium, and I heard for the
uh, sunflower, sedges, honeysuckle. Make sure you get that native honeysuckle, the one that hangs down in the thread, not that white one that opens up, not that one. Uh, lupines and violets. You're gonna think, violets, there's the tiniest little, little plant. Okay. How many? Violets can support 29 different kinds of moths and butterflies. So, you see these little, what, I have white violets in our forest. You know, they're an important part of the food chain. How about, can you name me some invasives? They all have favorites. <laughs> oh. Yeah? Jimmy's blind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> These oh, are bad things. And, and co it, it's, it, kogan kogan grass. And it's interesting here in Georgia we have less kogan grass than they have in Florida and Alabama because Georgia has the rule that they will come and get rid of it for you. And they will come back and make sure that you apply the pesticide. Over in Alabama, they'll say, here's some pesticide that get rid of that, but they don't check it and actually put it on. So um, in Georgia, they will come and put it on and make sure that it goes away. It's uh, one place where Georgia's sort of ahead of other places. So we see um, a Bradford pear, especially, you know, uh, is recommended. It's such a beautiful tree, you know, and, and now it crosses with a regular pear and it's everywhere and you see it in the fields and it's awful. Um, why do people plant this stuff? Bugs don't eat them. So if you want to have a plant that's in your yard that's perfect that no bug eats, oh, pick any one of those because bugs don't eat them. Because the bugs weren't evolved to be able to digest them. They form really dense barriers. Prim an autumn I was one time caught in and I'm like, it's my hair, my hair is caught in here. It's come completely sucked into the plant. Um, and some of them smell really good. You know, China Berry is a Persian lilac, and it's just the most lovely for two weeks of the year smelling thing. But boy, that's an aggressive plant. Oh, why are there problems? Insects don't eat them. Some berries, like Nandina, are poisonous. They have arsenic in them, and the birds will die. Uh, they form dense barriers and spread aggressively, which is what some people like. They choke out natives that insects need. That's sort of one of our big problems. That they'll, they'll just grow and grow and grow, and then there's nothing for those little insects. And without insects, there isn't any food for our baby birds. I don't know about you, but we've been living in the same place in the woods for 10 years. And I sort of pay attention to when does the chuck will widow come? What day does the hummingbird arrive? And how many different voices can I hear in the evening or the morning? And the voices in 10 years are a lot less. We have to do better. So what can you do? Get rid of the invasives in your yard. Now start out with that. Plant natives. Encourage others to do the same. And you can find a lot of information at plants.usd.gov. You can type in pretty much any plant name. You can give its common name or its scientific name. And you can find out everything about the plant. Um, and locally, and Tifton is the Center for Invasive Species at bugwood.org, and they have information about invasive plants, invasive insects, invasive um, amphibians. Uh, they have everything there. It's a very wonderful site. I did it less than five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much.